Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumstheword.com. Welcome to this full song lesson for free, continuing with my festive treats for you guys. This song was suggested over on my Facebook page where I'm currently asking all my members for their song suggestions for the next couple of months. And so other people get to vote on them by liking, by, uh, by liking them and the most popular songs get chosen for future lessons. So if you want to make your own song suggestions, then please go over to my Facebook page. You'll see an obvious post I have there uh, where you can put your song suggestions below. I've got the full PDF for you, all three pages of this song, uh, which you can download from my website. So make sure you have this printed out in front of you as we go through this together. You'll find a link for this free PDF um, beneath this video. And uh, it's going to be a beginner lesson, this. Um, the elements of this song are, are relatively simple that a beginner could be able to play this. There are a few parts that would throw that lesson into more intermediate level, but we'll talk about those and how we can simplify them so that you know, your, your beginner drummer can play. I'll go over what is actually being played, but obviously I'll, I want to um, bring it back a little bit for beginners because um, I, I don't think this song is um, that difficult that, uh, that a new drummer couldn't have a go at it. So, we start off with the intro, and the first thing to uh, talk about is the use of flams in this song. Um, We've got a lot of flams. Simon Gilbert likes to use uh, flams in this song quite a bit. So flam, just very, very briefly, we talked about this many, many times in other videos. Both hands coming down together, just ever so slightly apart. You get a more meaty snare drum, or more meaty drum sound by using a flam. Instead of just a one drum, you get this, this kind of like more solid double sound. Notice it's not, and it's not, it's just slightly apart. That's a flam. If you can't play a flam, if you really don't want to, then you can just play single snare drum notes through this, um, through this song if you wanted to. So we start off with this um, drum fill, and four, and. So it comes in on the and of three. One, two, three, and four, and one. If you play along to the song on the recording, then you'll get no counting. But when they're playing it with the band, the drummer, Simon, would probably, I haven't seen it, but they'd probably, he'd probably play one, two, three, and four, and one, just to keep everyone in time. One, two, three, and four, once so everyone knows where to come in, is what I meant. So we go on to the next bar, and this is really our main drum beat for the song. He's playing quarter notes, I believe, on the hi-hat. I've written loose hi-hat, but it's it's more closed than loose. It's it's sort of in between, it's one of those again. It's probably just using very, very big washy um, hats that are slightly open to get that sort of effect. Um, you don't want it fully open, that's too much. You don't want it fully closed, that doesn't sound like the recording, although you could have it fully closed, closed, that'd be absolutely fine. It's sort of in between, and I haven't got my earphones on, so I can't hear quite how that's going to sound. Um, but yeah, just keep it slightly washy. Quarter notes on the hi-hat, snare drum on two and four. One, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and. So we've got these bass drums falling on the and of two and the and of four, leading us into beat one and beat three. I'll keep the hi-hat closed for this. One, two, and three, four, and one. If you find this really difficult, playing quarter notes, but I highly recommend you try and play them that way. You could play eighth notes. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and so all the bass drum notes are lining up with the hi-hat, but what you hear on the recording, one, two, and three, four, and 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 one, two, So again from the intro, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and then on it goes. So that first line, one, two, three. On to the next line of the intro, I've called it. Um, and notice bar three, uh, the drum beat continues, but bar three we have a crash symbol on beat one. One, two, and three, four, and one. And then we get to our first distinctive drum fill of the, of the song. This is cool because what Simon does through the song is he changes the orchestration pretty much every time. He, he repeats a few exactly the same, but they're always kind of different to each other, which is cool for us drummers because we get to um, be taught uh, one rhythm but played many different ways, which is a cool thing to be able to do, you know, to di diversify and be able to imagine other ways of playing the same thing. So what I hear on the recording is this. We hear he plays one and two. So it's kind of tricky at this tempo to play two flams quite close to each other, but it's not impossible. Again, if you wanted to play one and two, the single snare drum notes, absolutely fine. But he plays one and two and, 
and then we get snare and crash on three, three and, and then it ends with four and. So one and two and three and four and one. One and two and one and two and three and four and one. Into the next line. And like I said, we're going to go over some different variations of that that I'm hearing on the recording. Um, you could play, um, if you don't want to um, uh, play the flam thing, you could continue with the hi-hat on beat two. One and two and just play one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. You could play that instead, but again, I'm hearing Nice linear drum fill that. So on to verse one, loose hi-hat again, same groove. This goes to the second line then. Bar three, crash the balloon beat one. Notice a repeating pattern here. Then we go into that uh, drum fill at the end of the second line and it happens to be exactly the same as the first one. If you've only got one crash cymbal, by the way, don't worry about that, just use the one crash cymbal. Then the second half of verse one starts with a crash cymbal. There's a crash cymbal on beat one of bar three, and then this, this idea that Simon seems to repeat uh, for the rest of the song, uh, but again, it's, it's, it simplifies a little bit, um, where, and you can see him live do it, it's where he, he comes off the hi-hat to play a flam on beat two of that bar just before the drum fill, which is a bit weird, because it's just, uh, I don't know, it's not emphasizing any part of the song, but anyway, you can hear it on the recording, he plays one, two, and three. So instead of one, two, and three, by the way, there's a crash cymbal on one and three there. He plays one, two, and three, and then back to the hi-hat for beat four. One, two, and three, four, and one. One, two, and three, four, and one. And then our drum fill at the end of the line is one and two. It's the same idea, it's, it starts the same way. One and two and into snare and crash on three, same way again. But then this is, this is uh, an interesting bit, which I had to amanara about a little bit. Um, what you're hearing on the recording is a bass drum coming down on the and of beat three and and then rolling into 16th notes on the snare drum which is quite tricky to play smoothly up to speed especially for a new drummer and a 40 and a and a 40 and a so the whole drum fill one and two and three and a 40 and a do that slower for you one and two and three and a 40 you only hear the snare drum on the uh, not the and, uh, uh, which is kind of strange to play. So that's what I'm hearing on the recording. I'm hearing no hi-hat on the and of three. So let's talk about simplifying it. First of all, play exactly the same thing how I would play it. I would play the hi-hat on the and of two with that bass drum. So then your hands are playing and uh, four E and. It's just right, left, right, left, right, left. It kind of helps you to start it in the right place because your right hand starts it rather than your left hand. And uh, four E and. That's how I would play it. So I'd play one and two and three and a forty and a one and two and three and a forty and a one and a forty and a and a forty and a. that's how I would play it. Um, the simplified way of, of doing it would be just to simply ignore that bass drum on the and a two and replace it with a snare drum. So you're not you're not playing exactly what you hear on the recording, but it's really close. You're just playing and a forty and a rather than and a forty and a. just replacing that first bass drum with a snare drum instead. So. One and two and three and a forty and a. In fact, that's what I believed you. That when I was playing onto so many years ago, this is from my era. This is what I believed you was playing. So the simplified version, simplified version again. One and two and three and a forty and a. One and two and three and a forty and a. One and sorry, no crash. One and two and three and a forty and a one. But on the recording, one and two and three and a forty and a one. That's what I'm hearing which isn't impossible to play, just takes a little bit of practice to make that transition between the bass drum and the snare drum smooth. So, <clears throat> let me just play that, um, that last line for you. One, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and one, and two and three, and the three and the one. And we're into our first chorus. <clears throat> so, what I'm hearing on the recording is he now moves to eighth notes on the ride cymbal, but you're really hearing the beats one, two, and three, and four coming through very clearly on the bell. He's kind of doing this motion. Which is a more advanced technique. I wouldn't expect a beginner drummer to be able to play that. What he's doing there, what I'm doing there, and what he's doing, is coming down for the bell on beat one and two, three, four, and then just moving back here 
just off the bell for the ands. One and two, and I'm using a motion which helps me do that really smoothly. If you're just a new drummer, don't worry about that bell thing. Just play all the eighth notes any way you like on the, on the cymbal, or you could play quarter notes just on the bell. So it's basically the same as our verse drum beat, but just up here instead of here. So you, you, you've got options there, but what you hear on the recording is in playing one, two, and three, four, and 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 one. But you could play one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, or one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. Yeah, you've got those three options depending on what you feel find more comfortable, but on the recording he's playing. So that continues, same bass drum pattern as our verses. Uh, we've got a crash cymbal every two bar though. Uh, so look at bar three, we've got a crash cymbal at the beginning there. The next line, crash cymbal at the beginning of the line. And then bar three, just before our drum full idea, again, he's coming down to play the flam on beat two. So we get one, two, and three, and then back to the hi-hat, four and two. It's exactly the same drum, exactly the same bars we had at the end of verse one on bar three. Exactly the same. One, two, and three, four, and one. Now, this time, this is uh, uh, our, our stab section, but definitely play differently. And it's kind of hard to hear sometimes whether it's the flam he's playing or a single note, but I can hear the hi-hat being played over the top, which gives me a clue as to what he must be playing. And in this bar, I hear the hi-hat, or a quarter note being struck on a crash or hi-hat through the whole bar. So I think he's playing this. This is a variation I showed you a second ago. One and two, one and two, one and two, one and two and, and then it simply ends with three and four and. I don't think there's a flam on four there because I can hear the hi-hat being played at the same time. So one and two and three and four and. A simplified version of, 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 that, of that lick, this would be the way I would teach a beginner to play it. Or to make it even simpler because that, and two bit throws a lot of people off. Just play one and two. Don't worry about playing that high hat on two. But that's what we hear on the recording. So, um, that second line, bar three. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Next line, back to the ride cymbal pattern we talked about, the last line. Um, we get this variation now at the end of the chorus, which happens at the very end of the song again, where we go into like a half-time fill. So look at bar three, and you can see there's just one snare drum on beat three of the bar, which is what, what it's called a half-time fill. The back beat drops out to just to one back beat per bar, and it sounds like you've slowed down. The tempo stays the same, it's just that it sounds like you've slowed down. It sounds like you've halved the tempo. So we get this, one, two, and three, Four and let's play that drum beat round a few times. Just that one bar. Uh, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. So we've gone from the bar before. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and snare and crash on beat three there. One, two, and three, four, and and then the last bar. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four, and one. That last line, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. And up to speed without me talking over the top of it. Okay, so, that might throw you off a little bit, that bit, because that comes out of nowhere. Just be ready for it. So verse two, on the next page, and we're just gonna go through the bits that are different now. So line two, bar three, crashable on beat one. Notice there's no flam on beat two this time. And then bar four is the same as our intro drum fill. Next line, it goes on the same, same idea. Last line, bar three, flam on beat two. One, two, and three. One, two, and three, four, and one, and then this drum fill, it's the same as we had going into our last chorus. One, 
and two and three and a four E and a. And with all the variations we talked about can be included there. So he's playing on the recording, but we talked about the variations. So chorus two, uh, same as chorus one, but a line two, bar three, one, two, and three, again, four, and, and then another variation of the drum fill, that last bar of line two, he plays this. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So he's playing, instead of one, and two, it's one, and two. The rest of it we've done before. One, and two, and three, and four, and. If you've got multiple crash symbols, I, I suggest you use them, because it sounds cool. So then next line, more of the same stuff. Uh, la very, uh, last uh, line, bar three, flam on two, one, two, and three, four, and one. And then this drum fill, again, another variation. One, and two, and, and then it ends with three, and four, and. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So we've got four variations of this one rhythm already. Uh, then we go into guitar solo. Uh, back to our verse groove, um, and bar three of line two, one, two, and three, no flam on two, one, two, and three, four, and one, and then uh, old, reliable, old, faithful comes back, one, and two, and three, and four, and, it's the one he plays the most in this song. So on to lie the last page. Guitar solo continued for two more lines. Um, bar three is one, two, and three, four, and no flam on two. And then this old drum fill, one, and two, and three, and a four, E, and a. Notice, by the way, when I go into the um, choruses, I'm not rushing to the right cymbal. I come, back, come in on beat two of the, of the, of the uh, chorus. I don't have to play one and. I just play one, two, and three, like that. And that's what most drummers would do. They just don't feel the need to rush to the and of one. Just, you know, no one's going to miss that and of one. The crash is still ringing out. So usually drummers come back in with the right hand pattern on the next downbeat, beat two. This is a thought. So then we go into chorus three, and it's our outro chorus. Line two, bar three, flam on, on uh, beat two. Apart from that, everything's the same. That drum fill at the end, one and two and three and four, and he's used that before. Let's go to the um, fourth line now. Third bar, flam on beat two. The drum fill there is uh, a new variation, um, kind of different to the others. Uh, we get one, two and three and, do that probably for you. One, two and three and four and. One, two and three. Very different to the rest of the drum fills. That's kind of like an odd one out. That line, line four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. So very different really to the other ones. Uh, the next two lines, look, we're looking at the last four lines of the page. The last, uh, so uh, one, two, three, four, five. Line five, same stuff. Line six, bar three, guess what? And then the last bar of that line is one and two and three and four and old faithful again. Then the next, the last two lines, the song starts to fade out now. And uh, for the very last time before it completely fades out, we get this, the last, very last two bars of the chart, we get one, two and three, four and one, two, three and four, exactly as we had before. And then for the very last bars of the song before it completely fades out, he just moves back to the right symbol. You never hear the last drum fill uh, variation. It's faded out by then. So let me just play for you uh, for fun. Let's do the last four lines up to speed.
Cool, okay. So if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumsaword.com. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd be happy to help if you've got any questions. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson. You'll find the link beneath the video, as well as the link to my Facebook page where you can make your song suggestions. And you might also consider signing up to become an online member at my website, drumsaword.com. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. Just like this lesson, I teach you every single bar from start to finish, you get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And I've got over 400 famous and popular songs on the website already, including another suede song, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future to be added. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more little video teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But any questions about any of that, email me, robertdrumstoword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.